John Knox, the man after whom our seminary is named, John Knox, the great reformer of Scotland, John Knox, one of that great triad that brought about the Protestant Reformation. Martin Luther in Germany, John Calvin in Switzerland, and John Knox in Scotland. No man, said Carlyle, has ever so totally transformed any nation as did John Knox. And it is my hope that we may have not only more ministers like Knox, but more Christians like John Knox. In 1530, 13 years after the Protestant Reformation began, John Knox was ordained as a priest in the Roman Catholic Church, the church of his birth and the church of his rearing. He was a zealous follower of that church in which he had learned all that he knew of religion. And for yet another 14 years, John Knox was to remain faithful to that communion. He had not yet, however, discovered what a Christian really was. Like many another person, he became a clergyman before he became a Christian. Isn't it interesting that that happened to all three? Both Luther and Calvin and Knox also. You may recall that Martin Luther went into a monastery library and there he found, to his utter surprise, something called the Bible. He was a clergyman and he was a doctor of theology and he'd never seen a Bible. Well, Knox couldn't find a Bible, but he did find a section entitled Writings Banned by the Inquisition. And is not the providence of God amazing? Guess what volume his eyes fell upon. And he removed, perhaps with almost trembling fingers from the shelf, it was a volume condemned by the Inquisition entitled The Institutes of the Christian Religion by some unknown Frenchman named John Calvin. And he read those, and when he did, it seemed that his heart began to glow and light began to fill his mind and he finally managed to get hold of a Bible, and as he read the Bible, his eyes fell upon this word in the high priestly prayer of Christ in John 17, and this is eternal life, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom he had sent. And John Knox was born anew. The Holy Spirit of God was pleased to take those words and drive them into his heart and bring forth new life. He came to see the utter folly in trusting in his own good works and his own efforts to be religious, to have salvation, which of course was the almost universal view in Europe until the Protestant Reformation. And by the way, tragically, is still a common view in even many Protestant and Presbyterian churches today.